My name is Rick Renner, and today I'm giving you a tour of our TV offices in Moscow. This really is Moscow, Russia. And hanging on the wall behind me is something totally Russian. This is a painting of Boris Gudunov, a man who illegally became the king of Russia in 1585, and he ruled all the way till 1605. And the reason he illegally became the king is because he murdered the young boy who was supposed to be the king, and he said his death was accidental. When they found the young boy that had been murdered, his head was cut off. And when people said to Boris, good enough, what happened to the boy? He said, oh, he had an epileptic seizure and accidentally during the seizure cut his head off by himself. Have you ever known an epileptic that accidentally cut their head off? It was called very suspicious at the time. And of course, he murdered the young boy, but he became the king of Russia in 1885 and ruled all the way to 1605, but was a very troubled man but it's because he had so much blood on his hands. And when you look at this painting, you see the picture of Boris Gudunov with torture in his eyes, holding a light in the darkness with one hand extended toward the scripture, looking for some way to find peace for his troubled soul. For me, this is such a good illustration of Russia a land that has been struggling to find peace for its soul for hundreds and hundreds of years, and the reason why God called me and my family to Russia nearly three decades ago. The Bible tells us in Job chapter 15 that wicked men are tormented. They have a lack of peace. But our job is to bring them the Bible so they don't have to look like this, and they don't have to struggle in the darkness wishing they could find peace for their soul. The gospel brings peace and the gospel will bring peace to you. But when I see this painting on the wall of our Moscow offices, I think about our call to bring peace to people that are troubled. And that's why this painting of Boris Gudunov is on the walls of our Moscow TV office. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insight and understanding from the Word of God. Here's Rick. Welcome to the program. This is Wednesday, and today I'm going to continue speaking to you about pastoral ministry. And I want you to order my series, which is called Pastoral Ministry. It's five parts. It comes in multiple formats. My friend, you only have one pastor in your life. Only one person you call pastor. And you need to know what the Bible says about your pastor and what is his ministry. If you understand his ministry, you'll know how to pray for him and how to work with him. And that's why I'm teaching this series called Pastoral Ministry. And it comes with a wonderful study guide. By the way, if you go to our website, to the store, you'll find so many study guides. It's like we lay a whole banquet of revelation and information right on the table in front of you. All you have to do is pull up to the table and dive in and open the study guides. But this particular series comes with a study guide called Pastoral Ministry. We're also offering you right now my book, which is called Chosen by God. The foreword is by my friend Joyce Meyer. The subtitle says, God has chosen you for a divine assignment. Will you dare to fulfill it? My friend, say yes. God really has something special for you to do. And when you say yes, you will step into a full spectrum colored world. You'll leave the black and white world you've been living in and everything will vibrantly come alive. When you say yes to the call of God, you will begin a life of adventure. And in this book, I will help you learn how to identify what is God's call for you. You have been chosen by God to do something special in this life. And for those who become partners, we always send you a package of books as our way of saying welcome to the partner family. And I want to say thank you for being a partner. If you are already a partner, you are really making a difference in somebody's life. Thank you so very much. And if you're not a partner, please pray about joining us. And immediately, we'll send you Denise's book called The Gift of Forgiveness. And we'll send you my book called Life in the Combat Zone because it is dedicated to partners. But hey, if you need prayer, remember that we're here for you. Just write us or call us right now. We're waiting to take your call. 
software. We're waiting for your email to show up in our inbox. And the moment we hear from you, we're going to really begin to put our prayer together with you for whatever it is that you're dealing with in your life right now. I promise you will be confidential and we will really pray with you. But reach for your Bible. And today we're going to continue our series on pastoral ministry. On Monday, we saw statistics about pastors. It was quite shocking. If you didn't hear that, you need to go back to the archives or order the series. You need to hear that because it will really help you understand what pastors deal with in their ministry. Then in yesterday's program, we saw God's expectation of pastors that is clearly outlined in Ezekiel chapter 34. And today we're going to see God's specific charge to pastors, which is in Acts chapter 20. But let's return to our anchor verse. I have my Bible. I hope you have yours. Let's go to Ephesians 4 verse 11, where the Apostle Paul is describing the fivefold ministry gifts which Christ gave to the church. And in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11, the Bible says, and he gave some apostles and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. Some time ago, I taught a whole series in one week called Fivefold Ministry, and I covered all of these and felt like I moved too fast. So now I'm backing up and I'm taking them all one by one because we need to understand the fivefold ministry gifts which Christ gave to the church. And in this verse, we see the word pastors. In Greek, this is the word poimen. The word poimen is the very Greek word for a shepherd. So you could translate this, he gave some to be shepherds, but it describes pastoral ministry as one who tends, rules, governs, feeds, guards, guides, and promotes, protects a flock. Did you hear that? There's a lot involved in pastoral ministry. One who tends, rules, governs, feeds, guards, guides, and protects a flock. And we saw in the last program that God has very clear expectations of pastors and when they fail to do what he's called them to do, he is against them. Well, we never want to hear Jesus say that he is against us. So we need to really understand what are God's expectations of pastors. I am a pastor, so I've always taken Ezekiel chapter 34 to heart I've taken it very seriously. Now in my life, I've had three pastors that have had a real significant impact in my life. My first pastor in the Baptist church, how I loved my pastor and he was such a good pastor. And he really set an example for me of what a godly pastor should be. The second pastor in my life was Dr. Bill Bennett who pastored the big church in Fort Smith, Arkansas. He married me in Denise and really mentored me in the ministry. And a lot of what I am today is because of that pastor. He really invested himself in me, how I loved Dr. Bennett. He was my second pastor that really impacted me. The third pastor that has really influenced my life is Pastor Bob Yandian. Though I never really sat under Bob very much because we were traveling all of the time, he was always available to me to speak into my life. And though today he is no longer serving as a pastor, I still call him Pastor Bob. He will always be Pastor Bob to me. But there are seven duties of a shepherd for his sheep. And this applies to pastoral ministry. Number one, a shepherd must know the state of his sheep or the state of his congregation. Number two, a shepherd or a pastor must know how to nourish, feed, and even reprove the sheep to bring them into a state of spiritual soundness. And if a pastor doesn't know how to do that, then he has to learn how to do it. Number three, a pastor or a shepherd must know how to rescue and restore sheep who have fallen into sin. You have to know how to do that because people struggle and people do fall into sin. Number four, a pastor has to know how to find the sheep that have been driven away. For various reasons, people leave the church. Sometimes they are offended or they're hurt. And as a pastor or as a shepherd, you have to know how to find them and bring them back into the fold. Number five, a pastor has to know how to bring the sheep into the fold who have strayed into strange pastors. pastures. Today, many people are listening to strange teaching and they get off. And when you have a member of your church that gets off, you've got to go after them. 
You've got to restore them and bring them back into your fold. Begin to feed them good word again. Number six, a pastor really has to know how to oppose and expel wolves that have gotten in among the sheep and are scattering them and from, from God and from each other. Sometimes wolves get into the flock, people with ulterior motives. And when you are a shepherd, you have the responsibility to defend your sheep, to defend truth, and to make sure those wolves don't have entrance into the flock. And that is part of the responsibility of a pastor. And finally, a pastor or a shepherd has to know how to preach, explain, and defend truth for the sheep. In fact, when you look at God's expectations of pastors that is recorded in Ezekiel chapter 34, over and over and over, God reproves the shepherds for not feeding the flock. And feeding the flock is the primary responsibility of every local pastor. Now, I want us to go to Acts chapter 20. So turn to Acts chapter 20, and today we're going to go to verse 28, and we're going to see God's specific charge to pastors. This is a very important verse. And in Acts chapter 20, verse 28, the Apostle Paul is speaking to the elders who have pastoral responsibility in the city of Ephesus. And listen to what he says. Take heed therefore unto yourself and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. He begins this verse by saying, take heed. In Greek, this is the word pros echo. Now listen very carefully. The word pros means to turn. The word echo means to embrace. It really means change your focus. I want you to really focus on something and don't just focus on it, but give it your fullest attention. Embrace it. This word prosecco means to give one's full attention to what is being spoken and heard and drawing as near as possible to give one's full intention, attention and to fully embrace what is being said. So Paul is literally saying, stand up straight, throw your shoulders back, hold your head high, open your ears, hear what I'm about to say. And Paul says, you need to give attention therefore unto yourself and to all the flock. Paul does not immediately say, give your attention to the flock, he first of all says, take heed therefore unto yourself. Listen careful. The first responsibility of any spiritual leader is to take heed to himself. I'll use me as an example. I can't feed you if I'm not feeding me. You will not grow as a result of my teaching if I am not growing. If I'm not hearing God, I can't hear you, God, hear God. If I'm not exercising and taking care of my health, I won't be very around very long in order to minister to you. And so the first responsibility of any spiritual leader, including a pastor, is to take heed to himself. He needs to have a daily discipline of praying, reading, studying the Bible, and don't assume that all pastors do that because all do not. Many pastors don't even know how to study. They have to learn how to study. Many pastors don't know how to be disciplined, so they have to learn how to be disciplined. When I was a young man, I was very talented and very gifted, and it didn't require a lot for me to be able to produce a message. But Dr. Bennett, that pastor who had such a role in my life, he began to teach me that I had to take heed to myself and he taught me how to have discipline. He taught me how to have study habits and a prayer life. He really taught those things to me. And that was essential. And if I had not developed those things in my life, I would not be sitting in this chair talking to you today. And likewise, every pastor has to take heed to himself first. His own spiritual life has to be his first spiritual priority. And then to the rest of the flock. And that's what the verse says. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock. And notice even the word all. The word all that is used here is the word panty. It is an all-inclusive term, which means no one is excluded or missing, which means a pastor is responsible for everyone in his congregation. He cannot have favorites or say, I like this one and I don't like that one. If they're called to his church, then he's responsible spiritually for everyone in the church, all the flock. And the word flock 
is the Greek word for a flock of sheep, which here figuratively is a congregation. So here we have the picture of a shepherd with his flock of sheep or a pastor and his congregation. And the Bible says, take heed therefore unto yourselves, number one, secondly to all, every single member of the church, the whole flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Notice this verse says, over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers. Hath made is the Greek word tithemi. The word tithemi in this case means to set in place, to position, to fix in place, or to establish, which means pastors have been set in place by the Holy Spirit. This is so very important. God has called them and God has set them in place. Recently, I was speaking to a pastor who said, well, I've blown my opportunity. Here I've been serving as a pastor all of these years. I could have made money. I could have gone into business. I could have done something else. I said, sir, if you feel that way, then you were never called to be a pastor. Because when you're called to be a pastor, it is a lifetime call. It is not just an occupation or a profession. It is something that the Holy Ghost called you to do. It is not an optional career. You're called to be a pastor. You're called into ministry. This is not optional. It is a divine calling. And in this verse, it says, over which the Holy Ghost has set you in place. And when the Bible says, hath made you overseers, again, set in place, the Greek word tithemi, it means he set you there, he has established you there, he has fixed you there. And because it is the Holy Spirit that has put us in our places, it means we are answerable to the Holy Spirit for how we do our jobs. Wow. And this verse says, he has set us in place or made us to be overseers, overseers. The word overseers is a translation of the Greek word episkopos. This is a compound of two words. The word epi means over. The word skopos means to look. Do you hear another word? How about microscope, telescope, scope? It means to see something or to look. But when you compound epi and skopos together, it forms the word episkopos. It's where you get the word for a bishop or an overseer. It's even where you get the term for the Episcopal church, episkopos. But it describes one that has oversight. It means to look over, to have oversight, to administrate, or to manage. It describes a supervisory position, one whose responsibility is to guide, direct, and to give oversight. It does not mean the pastor is to do everything in the church, but as an episcopus, as a manager or one with oversight, it is his responsibility to make sure everything in the church is getting done. I think about my own ministry. I can't do everything in my ministry, but I am the bishop of my ministry. I am the episcopus, I'm the overseer of my ministry. So you could say the buck stops with me, God's gonna hold me responsible for whatever happens under my oversight. And it is my responsibility to do what? To guide, to direct, to give oversight, to administrate, to manage. All of that is involved in pastoral ministry. And I think this is so very important for us to understand. Being a pastor is responsibility. Somebody asked me one day, if you were to choose a word to describe your life, what word would you choose? And I said, responsibility. God has given me responsibility. Responsibility for my life, responsibility for my family, responsibility for my spiritual growth, responsibility for my ministry, responsibility for the people that are under me or who are listening to me right now. When you're called into ministry, you're called into a position of responsibility. And this verse says, over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God. There the word feed shows up again, just like I told you. We saw in Ezekiel chapter 34 that God over and over reprimands pastors and shepherds for not feeding the flock. And now in this chapter, we're looking at God's charge to pastors and God says you are to feed the flock. And the word feed is much more than just feeding. Listen to this. The Greek word means to tend, 
to rule, to govern. It pictures, listen, feeding, guarding, guiding, and protecting a flock. But let me tell you, the most beneficial thing any pastor can do for his church is to give them the Word of God. Because when you give the Word of God to your congregation, they will develop a sense of discernment about what is right, what is wrong, the Word of God will give them common sense. The Word of God will make them physically healthy. The Word of God is the best thing that any pastor can give to his congregation. And the Bible says to feed the church. Mm, the word church. This is very important. Because when you pastor, you need to remember you're leading the church of God. That's exactly what this verse says, to feed the church of God. The word church, the Greek word ekklesia, is a compound of the word ek and the word kaleo. The word ek means out, the word kaleo means to call. When you compound the two words together, ek and kaleo, it forms ekklesia, which describes a called, separated, and prestigious assembly. An assembly of distinguished people, wow. In the New Testament, it depicts the body of believers that have been called out, hmm, selected and assembled to be God's representatives in every town, city, state, or nation, a body that is called to make decisions that affects the atmosphere of a region. We're not just leading people, we're leading the church of God, people whom God called out and the very meaning of the word ecclesia means these are distinguished people. This is a very privileged assembly. These are God's people. And when a pastor becomes weary and tired, maybe he doesn't want to go to church or deal with people, it's very good for him to remember, I am serving the church. There is not a more distinguished group of people on the face of the earth. These are God's people. In fact, the verse says, which he hath purchased with his own blood. This word purchased is a Greek word which pictures a comprehensive purchase, a total purchase, completely purchased and taken wholly or completely. These are people which Christ has purchased out of slavery by his own blood for himself. And now they have become the ecclesia, God's called out ones. This is God's distinguished, prestigious people. And that is who pastors are called to serve. And it's good to remember, I'm not just serving people, I'm serving blood-bought people. There's not a more honorable group of people on the face of the earth, and it's a privilege for me to serve them. Hey, I'm out of time, but I'll be back in just a moment, and I want to pray for you. The Bible says God gave the gift of pastor to the church and that this gift is needed for the body of Christ. It is vital for you to understand what a pastor is. Is it possible that a pastor is much more than you realize or that your view of the pastoral gift is tainted by a traditional church background? In the five-part series, Pastoral Ministry, Rick Renner reveals why God gave the pastoral gift to the church. You'll find out why you need a pastor how to find your pastor, and how you and your pastor should relate to each other according to the teaching of Scripture. Rick Renner will show you how to recognize a true pastoral gift, how to know the voice of your pastor, how to work successfully with a pastor in the local church, how to correctly honor a local pastor, and so much more. This series is jam-packed with insights to help you know more about the pastor God has given you. Available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $10. You'll be so glad you took time to digest this powerful series. In addition, you can also purchase the book Chosen by God. In this book, Rick will prove to you beyond any shadow of a doubt that God's hand is on you and He wants to do something marvelous with your life. The book Chosen by God can be yours for only $18. Don't miss this special offer, this series, Pastoral Ministry, and the book chosen by God. Call the number on your screen now or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. My name is Joel Renner, coming to you right from Moscow, Russia. And I want to tell you about the certain outreaches of our ministry that we do here in Russia. You know, people need help, but more importantly, people need Jesus. And in these outreaches that we provide, people can have both. They can receive help, 
and Jesus. For decades, we have been able to touch millions of lives with the gospel of Christ and the love of God. We've been privileged to do this through broadcasting Christian television programs all over the world, starting churches that are thriving to this day, visiting orphanages with gifts for children and the workers, visiting prisons to minister hope in God's Word, visiting mental institutions to share the freedom that is found in Christ, equipping graduates of our Bible seminary so they can go out and help others, reaching thousands through our Internet Good News Church with Bible teaching and spiritual care. Because of you, we are able to take the gospel of Christ both to our nearby world and to the ends of the earth. Please call or go to renner.org to make a financial donation so that through your giving, we can continue to make this huge difference in people's lives. I am so glad you were with me today as we've been discussing the ministry of the pastor. And I want you to order the series, which is called Pastoral Ministry. This series will help you appreciate your pastor so much more. And it comes with a wonderful study guide. The two of these together are just powerful. This would be great for your Sunday school class or a home Bible study group or to share with somebody that you're discipling or just for you. But you need to hear it and hear it and hear it. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing. So get the series and get the study guide. And we're also offering you my book, which is called Chosen by God. God has chosen you for a divine assignment. Will you dare to fulfill it? Please say yes. My friends, say yes. God has an adventure waiting for you. And I want you to remember that if you need prayer, we are here for you. And at Rick Renner Ministries, we're just people that believe in prayer. And we want to put our faith together with you for whatever it is that you're facing in life. We're waiting to take your call right now or for your email to show up in our inbox. But let me pray for you right now. Father, we thank you that you've called each of us to do something. You really have chosen us. We thank you for our pastors. And Father, we ask you to help us to have a new appreciation for what they do, and we ask you to strengthen them. You're the one that has set them in place. We ask you to strengthen them and anoint them for the ministry you've given them to do. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Well, when we come back tomorrow, we're going to see what is God's reward for pastors. It's going to be very good. Don't miss it. But until then, remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there is power. Never forget that. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Bye-bye. Rick Renner Ministries is proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ through every available media to the uttermost parts of the earth. Discover the many ways you can help us make a difference in lives around the world with the Word of God. We invite you to partner with us in teaching, strengthening, and rescuing lives for the glory of God. Together, we can make a difference that will last throughout eternity.